Hello there guys, today we are going to be doing IB Math A HL Paper 3 from November 22 examination session. Uh, this is going to be split into a few videos to account for the time limit, but uh, should go fine. Yes, so now starting off with our first question. Let's just look at this. This looks pretty complicated, but um, let's simplify it. We have Q is equal to 1 as our main point. So if we were to substitute that into this equation, we'd end up with 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And you might recognize this as a arithmetic series with common ratio R is equal to 1 and first term A is equal to 1. Or I guess the notation for arithmetic series is D and U, but same difference, guys. Don't worry about that. Now we can just use our uh, sum of finite terms, which is equal to 1 by 2 number of terms. So 1 to n, which is n terms. Multiply that by your first term, which is 1, plus your last term, which is n. And that is your final answer. And of course, this is just one mark, so don't worry too much about this one. Up next, you have the situation where q is equal to 2, which means 1 squared. 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, and so on till n squared. So how about we take a look at this table. We have when n is equal to 1, it's 1 squared, which is 1. When n is equal to 2, we have the this value is 2 squared, which is 4, and the sum of these two is 5. So for our third term, we have 3. So that's 1 plus 4 plus 9. And that gives us the value 14. So P is equal to 14. Of course, so going ahead, value of P, let's just pull that down here. Keep track of your questions while you're doing this. Um, and then we have question or part two of this question, where you are going to create a system of linear equations. So the hardest part about this is writing it neatly. So in your actual exam paper, you're going to have your um, extra sheets where you can write this down neatly. So here, let's just take this pretty simply. Let's take the value of n is equal to 1. For n equal to 1, you have a1 plus a2 plus a3. If we substitute that in here, 1, 1, 1. Because one, uh, 1 squared is 1 and 1 cubed is 1. Now for n is equal to 2, we have 2a1 plus 4a2 plus 8a3. And for n is equal to 3, we have 3a1 plus 9a2 plus 27a3. So let's number our equations. 2, 3. Next, we are going to find the values of a1, a2, and a3. So this can be done pretty simply just by uh, solving your simultaneous equations. And this can be done on the GDC just by um, using the polynomial solver function. Um, this is present in the Casio FX and G50. I'm not sure about the TI-84 or TI-Inspire. So just check your calculator's guides for that. Um, but we're going to do this manually just uh, to get a feel for how you do it if it was to show up in paper 1 or something. So first we'll take equation 2, subtract equation 1 times 2, and this is to eliminate a1. So our first goal here is to eliminate the variable a1. So here we'd get 2a2 plus 6a3. And then we're going to call this equation 4. Then we can take equation 3 and subtract equation 1 times 3 from it, which will give us uh, 6a2 plus 24a3. And this is question, f uh, this is equation 5. And now we can reduce these two equations, 4 and 5. So if we take equation 5 minus 3 times equation 4, let's eliminate variable a2. This will give us, um, let's see, 18, 6a3 is equal to 2. Oops, okay, so remember this, guys. You can't just finish the equations there. You do have to write equal to 1 
equal to 5 and equal to 14 straight from here because the sums of the equations for n is equal to 1, n is equal to n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, and n is equal to 3 show up in the system of linear equations here. So remember to write that. Um, let's just uh, fix these equations so that they make a little bit more sense. Is equal to 3 is equal to 11. And so when we actually perform this, we get 6a3 is equal to 2. And that means that a3 is equal to 1 by 3. And the rest of them can be solved in a similar way. Um, let's go ahead and just substitute this value of a3 back into equation 4. Uh, 2a2 plus 2 is equal to a3. The value of a2 is 1 by 2. Now let's substitute these two values back into equation 1 up here. And putting that in, we get a uh, 1 or a 1 plus 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 is equal to 1, which gives us a 1 is equal to 1 by 6. So these are the three values of a 1, a 2, and a 3. And it's just two marks because you'd ideally do this in your um, GDCs uh, with the simultaneous equations part. But if you were to do it manually, this would also work. Moving on to part C of the question. Um, show that the function x, f dash of x is equal to this. And again, this is just one mark. So what we can do is simply differentiate our, this equation, the function f. So when you differentiate it, we can write out 0 plus 1 plus 2x plus 3x squared plus, and it goes all the way to nx n minus 1. Now, if you multiply f dash of x by x, you end up with x plus 2x squared plus 3x cubed all the way to nx whole power n. And that's your proof. Moving on. Um, yeah, let's take a look at the next part. F2 is x f dash of f1 dash, and which means that f1 is equal to x f dash of x. So just remember, remember that this is f1 of x. So don't forget that. So looking at this, this is f2. We need f2 of x, which means we have to take this value and differentiate it. So if you take f1 dash of x, we get 1 plus 4x squared plus 9x, oh, 4x plus 9x squared plus, and it goes all the way to n squared x and minus 1 x power n minus 1. So x f dash uh, x is equal to x plus 2 squared x squared. So we're just going to write each one as this uh, product of the squares or cubes in this case plus n goes all the way to n squared x power n. So that works pretty well. So we have f2 is equal to this. Let's pull that down here. sum gives us so if we take i squared i squared is equal to 1 so 1 squared x power 1 plus 2 squared x squared plus 3 squared x cubed and so on to uh, n squared x power n and you now have the two um, portions up next, you have a proof by mathematical induction. So this is actually a pretty big question. So we're going to leave this for the end of the video because this requires you to substitute in the basic part where you take uh, substitute in 1 
and then substitute in n and n minus 1, which is your basic way of doing um, mathematical induction. Just do that. It's a pretty lengthy procedure, which is why it accounts for six marks. But uh, don't worry about it too much, guys. As long as you know the method, you can just statically apply it. Up next, writing using sigma notation, I write down the expression for f of fq of 1. So, uh, of 1 means that x is going to be replaced by 1. So, it's going to be sigma i is equal to 1 and i power q, 1 power i, and 1 power anything is going to be 1 anyway. So, i is equal to 1 and i q. That's going to be your sigma notation of this, of fq of 1. Up next, we are going to consider f of x as a geometric sequence. And we have to show this. <clears throat> this is where a little bit of thinking outside the box has to be done. So, what you actually have to do here is take the geometric series. So, I mean... Uh, the first thing you do in under exam conditions is just go straight up r is equal to x, a is equal to 1, sum of finite terms straight out of the data booklet, guys, is going to be, um, yes, it is going to be a into r power n minus 1 by uh, r minus 1, which is going to be, uh, yep, which is going to be 1 x power n minus 1 by x minus 1. And you'll notice that this is just one spot away from this n plus 1. So let's not do this. Instead, let's ignore the 1 for now. So let's take this to be your geometric series. So a is equal to x and r is equal to x. So when you apply this, your sum becomes x, x power n minus 1, all divided by x minus 1. Now, of course, because you ignored this minus, ignored this plus 1 in the beginning, you add that back now. So, when we get rid of the plus 1, replace it with the x minus 1 and move to the numerator, we get x power n plus 1 minus x plus x minus 1, all divided by x minus 1. And that gives you x power n plus 1 minus 1 by x minus 1. And that is your proof. Okay, so the next one is going to require a little bit of space, even more than this. So what we can do is we'll just cut this out and move it to the next page. So bear with me while I add a new page and cut this out perfect okay so starting with part f for x not equal to 1, show that f1 of x is equal to this huge expression. So you might remember f1 of x is equal to x f dash of x. So let's start with f dash of x. Considering the geometric sum using this, hmm? we're going to use that in this scenario f of um, f dash of x which means d by dx of this function x power n plus 1 minus 1 by x minus 1 now solving this means that we have we're going to have to use our quotient rule so we take u is equal to x power n plus 1 minus 1 u dash is equal to n plus 1 times x power n, v is going to be x minus 1, take up the brackets for that, x minus 1, and v dash is going to be 1. 
So v u dash minus u v dash by v squared gives us x minus 1 times u dash n plus 1 x power n minus u v dash. So u x power n plus 1 minus 1 1 whole divided by v squared. So x minus 1 whole squared. Going ahead, splitting this up, we get, yeah, so we will get x and x power n plus x n plus 1. Yeah, so I'm going to do this, this, and, and then multiply by th those by x power n. Or minus here, minus n x power n plus 1, no, minus nx power n, yep, going ahead, minus x power n, minus x power n plus 1, plus 1, because this minus comes here. So watch in science, guys, this is one of the places where everybody makes silly mistakes, losing marks, that's something you really do want to avoid because those are the things you can control. So let's go ahead and get rid of these two because they cancel out. And we are left with n x power n plus 1 minus, because this one comes there by power rule, minus. So let's take x power n out as common, x power n. And n plus 1 plus 1 by x minus 1 whole squared. Now you might be thinking, oh, we don't have n plus 2 or x in the numerator. That's because this is f1 of x. And if you remember right here, we multiply that by x. So f1 of x is equal to x times this function. So I'm just going to duplicate this because I'm lazy. But in your actual exam, it shouldn't take you more than a few seconds to rewrite it. And therefore, f1 of x is equal to nx power n plus 2 minus x power n plus 1 times n plus 1 plus 1 whole divided by x minus 1 whole squared. Hence, proved. Ha. Huh. Now we are going to go on to G part one. So you can solve both of these right here, but for consistency's sake, I'm going to move these to the next page as well. So, yep. And paste that in. So let's start with this one. So indeterminate form basically means zero by zero. So let's apply the limit x is equal to x is equal to 1, which is the limit for the function f dash of x, f1 of x, sorry, f1 of 1 is equal to, using our process up here, we find that we have n minus n plus, minus n plus 1, plus 1, all divided by 1 minus 1, which is equal to 0 by 0. And that's your indeterminate form. And here's where the question becomes big. So we have to apply Le Hopital's rule to the function f1 of x. Excuse my pronunciation. Um, so let's go ahead and just differentiate the numerator and denominator by the same value. So the numerator is n x n plus 2 minus x n plus 1 n plus 1 plus 1. What happens when you differentiate this? You get n plus 2 times n times x power n plus 1 minus x power n times n plus 1 times n plus 1 and this just becomes zero, so we're gonna leave that out. Now, before we go any further, I want you guys to think about what happens when we apply the limit x equal to one here. We will get n plus two 
times n and this one just disappears minus n plus 1 whole squared so let's take a look at what happens here n squared plus 2n minus n squared plus 2n n squared plus 2n plus 1 and that does not look good does it guys because now we end up with a um with a fine numerator because these get cancelled out but the, the problem arises when you look at our denominator oh oops um did i mess something up no. okay yeah yeah that's what i messed up this is not plus one guys um when you multiply it by x this becomes x so watch out for those silly mistakes because they will catch you so this is not one this is x and this gives you plus one and this is also minus one and plus one which means these two cancel out and give you zero now uh this quickly look at what happens to the denominator as well so i'll write that a bit lower x minus 1 whole squared when you differentiate it you get 2x minus 1 and of course you could also like expand it x squared minus 2x plus 1 and do all that stuff but um let's just apply the chain rule 2x minus 1 times 1 that disappears so this is what you get and when you apply the limit you will get 2 times 0 which is 0 so this tells you that you have indeterminate form once again. So let's take a step back and before we differentiate or before we apply the limit, let's apply the rule one more time. So here we get n plus 2, n plus 1, n x power n minus x power n minus 1 n plus 1, n plus 1, n. And if you look at this now, these look extremely similar, the two coefficients of x. They look really similar with the exception of this being n plus 1 whole squared and this being n plus 2 times n plus 1. So going ahead and if expanding it, we would find that we don't have the same value in the numerator, which means that uh, the numerator is no longer equal to zero. Now, let's apply that same logic to the denominator. We will get two because x, differentiation of x minus one is simply one. So this is also not equal to zero. So let's put these together. Um, in the exam, I would suggest writing this as an actual fraction. So let's go ahead and do that n plus two times n plus 1 times n x power n minus n plus 1 whole squared times n x power n minus 1 whole divided by 2. So let's take the 1 by 2 out and let's expand n cubed plus 3n squared plus 2n minus n cubed plus 2n squared plus n. Of course, yes. And uh, I got rid of the x's because it's x power 1. So taking this away, this goes away, this goes away. And this goes away and the coefficient of n squared goes away here. This goes away and the coefficient of n goes away there. So it's 1 by 2 n squared plus n. Let's take the n out as common. n plus 1. Hence, shown. So for your final proof, you are going to want to write out the function. And again, I am lazy, so let's do a bit of copy-paste here. Uh, 
again in your exams it honestly would probably be faster to just write this out but yes lim x tends to 1 of this function gives you this hence show all right let's move on to question number two which is again oh uh, this is pretty interesting we are looking at the cone when it's revolved around the x-axis so going ahead and looking at this let's just start off given m is equal to 2 h is equal to 3 let's just start off given m is equal to 2 and h is equal to 3 we can go ahead and substitute so this is y and we have y is equal to mx so a is equal to 2 pi m let's take the m out because this is with respect to dx root over 1 plus m squared from 0 to 3 of x dx is equal to substitute in our 2 4 pi root 5 times 9 by 2 because the integral of x is x squared by 2 from 0 to 3 is equal to 9 by 2 so cancelling 18 root 5 pi hence show so this is a pretty simple part there's only two marks probably for the splitting and the integration now this did use an expression for the radius of this cone or in terms of h and m so let's go ahead and like draw out a very rough sketch of this cone so that's how it's revolved around the x-axis and this passes through the center point this is going to be a line y is equal to mx and as it's revolved around you end up with this so let's take a look at what this is h now the radius of the cone is this so that means that this from here to here is your radius so what happens when you look at that since this is zero you just need to find this point and this point conveniently can be defined by the equation y is equal to mx and the value of x here is h so radius is equal to mh next an expression for the slant height so here let's go ahead and apply Pythagoras theorem so we have h here and we have mh here here so this is l so looking at it this is a right angle this is a hypotenuse so l squared is equal to h squared plus m squared h squared so we will continue deriving down oops we will continue deriving down there And that means that L is equal to H root over 1 plus M squared. Yes, I did uh, simplify a little bit. I took H out as common, took it out from underneath the root. But uh, yeah, you might want to show those steps in the final answer or in your exam. Next, you're going to show that A is equal to pi R L. So A is equal to from there we have 2 pi m root over 1 plus m squared from 0 to h x dx now this we already got here when we just substitute in y is equal to mx so going ahead solving um let's just take this um interval let's see what happens to this we get x squared by 2 with limits from 0 to h, which is h squared by 2. So now plugging this back in, we get a is equal to 2 pi m root over 1 plus m squared times h squared by 2. That's nice. 
simplifying and if you look at these two expressions you have an h here and here so how about we split this h into h times h a is equal to um h m times pi times h root over 1 plus m squared and that's r this is r this is pi and this is l so a is equal to pi r l let's move on to this let's move on to part c yep part c so here we are going to look at a semicircle so this was simply defined by x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared which is the equation of a circle y is equal to r squared minus x squared um and to limit the range from to the positive axis we take the square root and that gives us a semicircle so that's not really important but uh, it's good to know so find an expression for dy by dx let's do some differentiation dy by dx is equal to this is chain rule application you're going to see that um this is actually r squared minus x squared that was messy r squared minus x squared whole power one by two one by two r squared minus x squared minus one by two and that gives you basically two root over r squared minus x squared now let's multiply that by the differentiation of uh, within the uh, function, which is minus 2x, minus 2x. So let's cancel out our 2s, simplify dy by dx is equal to minus x by square root r squared minus x squared. And that's it. Going ahead to the next part. This is where your formula for the surface area of revolution about the x-axis comes along. So this formula a is equal to 2 pi from x1, x2, y. So let's go ahead and straight apply our function. a is equal to 2 pi from minus r to r because those are the limits. y is root over r squared minus x squared times root over 1 plus so let's square dy by dx we get x squared in the numerator and r squared minus x squared in the denominator so let's combine the two square root operators by so r root over r squared minus x squared times so let's move the r squared minus x squared to the numerator r squared minus x squared plus x squared by r squared minus x squared and let's start cancelling we cancel the numerator and that there to simplify and the minus x squared plus x squared to pi r squared and this is with respect to x so don't forget your dx guys a is 2 pi from minus r to r r dx a is equal to 2 pi r uh, minus r to r dx a when you integrate dx you simply get x equal to 2 pi r r minus minus r a is equal to 4 pi r squared because this becomes 2r and hence proven moving on let's look at part e describe this geometric transformation so this is f is equal to f of kx which means that it's stretching by factor 1 by k remember guys it's not k it's 1 by k along x axis next let's write down the intercepts of the graph of this in terms of r and k so what that means is the um 
x intercepts means that y is equal to 0. So f of kx is equal to root over r squared minus k squared x squared equal to 0 r squared minus k squared x squared equal to 0 squaring on both sides and let's take this x is equal to root over r squared oh, oops yeah r squared by k squared x is equal to r by k but don't forget it's plus or minus because here the square root acts as an operator not a function when it acts as an operator you get both the positive and negative values when it acts as a function you only get your positive values so x is equal to plus or minus r by k going ahead let's look at finding dy by dx in terms of x r and k so what you might find similar is between this function and this function is that the only change is that the kx squared and it's multiplied by a constant so in short dy by dx is going to be the same as before which was um, minus x by root over r squared minus x squared but because you have a k here and k is a constant so you have k squared and you have k squared here that's it obviously you could also go through the whole process and show it which would definitely be worth it for step marks so go ahead and do that on your own but for the sake of time we're going to stick to this then we are going to look at ellipsoids in part four so the semi-ellipse y is equal to uh, f of kx is loaded about the x-axis by 360 degrees um so what this means is that you are essentially yeah same as the sphere you're just making an ellipsoid so let's go ahead and write out the formula for this so uh for the because this is actually a pretty big question i am going to move this to the next page Yep, perfect. Yep, there we go. So let's start solving b semi ellipse y is equal to f of kx so, so let's start with dy by dx dy by dx as we had before is minus k squared x all divided by r squared minus k squared x squared and y is equal to root over r squared minus k squared x squared and let's plug it into the formula that we had a is equal to 2 pi integral from x1 to x2 of y times the root of 1 plus dy by dx whole squared going ahead a is equal to 2 pi x1 to x2 plug in the formulas r squared k squared x squared times root of 1 plus k power 4x squared by r squared minus k squared x squared okay, so watch your powers there because this is outside so it becomes k power 4x squared while the other one stays like that and similar to last time let's combine the um square roots and get rid of the denominator so this denominator and this would cancel out but before we do that we have to move the one to the numerator so that becomes r squared minus k squared x squared plus k power four x squared and that is your area and you're going to want to look at the question where it says that it's in the form of root of p 
the of x and so in this case your function p of x would be r squared minus k squared x squared plus k power 4 x squared and moving on to the last question in this paper guys we're almost there planet earth can be modeled as an ellipsoid ellipsoid sorry in this model the ellipsoid has an axis of rotational symmetry uh, from the north pole to the south pole and the values for the diameter of the earth and the distance from the So we are just going to move this over to the next page again for consistency's sake. And yep. Let's go ahead. So first of all, I'm going to start by drawing a, a rough diagram. So let's say this is Earth. Uh, that's a potato. This is slightly better potato. Earth. Okay. We have our North Pole here and South Pole here. And the distance from the North Pole to the South Pole is 12714 kilometers. And this distance from here to here is 12756 kilometers. So how about we now transform this into our graph so that we can actually figure out what's happening here. And yes, they did ask for the surface area of the Earth. So let's go ahead and give them that. Ha. Yep. Okay. So we have a very lopsided Earth here. Going from here. And then we come back down here. Very lopsided, not very symmetrical. I'm not the best artist, but it's okay. Let's assume this to be our North Pole and this to be our South Pole. Let's start marking out uh, uh, the important points here. So you're going to want to take... Okay. Let's start with our radius. So... This value right here is going to be r, which is equal to the radius. And this is going to be equal to this. So let's call this um, r dash because we're dealing with an ellipsoid. Um, k is the factor by which it's stretched, but we'll get to that in a second. What you're actually going to be looking at here is the fact that What you're actually going to be looking at here is the importance of our um, equations. And you're going to have to find values of k and r in order to solve this problem. So when you look at this, yeah, we need r and k. So when you look at this, we had our circle. So let's just draw a quick circle graph here. So yeah. And this is your semicircle this r is equal to this r now obviously you could choose this to be r and this to be r dash but you have to remember that f of kx means there's a stretch in the x-axis which means that your r value is still going to be the same in the vertical direction so let's go ahead and define the value of r for us so r is going to be the distance, is going to be half the equatorial distance. And equatorial distance is 12756 kilometers. Divide that by 2, we get... So dividing that by two, we will get um yeah, take up the PC's dice. This is more that's important. Uh 
one two seven five six divided by two that gives you six three seven eight kilometers so let's just write that out here six three seven eight kilometers and what else yes we are going to want to find the value of r dash so r dash is equal to the polar distance which is this divided by two so one two seven one four divided by two six three five seven kilometers now let's to find the value of k we could uh, find the ratio between r and r dash but to be on the absolutely certain side let's take our equation y is equal to root over r squared minus k squared x squared huh? and then we can solve it so let's take this point let's take our south pole y is equal to zero at the south pole your r squared value is going to be the same six three seven eight squared minus k squared which is unknown and x squared x squared is going to be r dash here so six three five seven squared so let's go ahead and pull this out k squared is equal to six three seven eight squared by six three five seven squared would you look at that it actually did um do exactly what we we're gonna do k is equal to six three seven eight by six three five seven k is equal to six three seven eight divided by six three five seven and they've asked for the area to be given to four significant figures so let's take the value of k to six one point zero zero three three zero three or seven i guess so this is going to be the value of k it's going to be the value of r so just put a box around these because they've asked for suitable values of r and k make life easier for the examiner hopefully the examiner is less annoyed when he's um correcting your paper if you know what i mean anyways um let's go ahead and apply this to our integral that we have um here so if we take this yes i am going to copy paste but in the actual exam you'll be able to see all parts of your paper pretty easily so this should not be an issue me i'm doing it because i don't have space so this is easier for me um yeah so uh yeah let's go ahead and start substituting so because we have the value of r and the value of k we can apply those to our equation here just call the length of we need a is equal to 2 pi and your x1 and x2 here are going to be minus r dash and plus r dash um root over r squared so six three seven eight uh, squared minus k squared which is 1.003303 whole squared x squared plus uh, 1.003303 our 4 x squared whole rooted so now um, let's actually write down the value of what it's going to be so minus 6357 plus 6357 and I am going to directly input this into my GDC and yeah it's, uh, square root of six three six three seven eight squared minus one point zero zero three three zero three whole squared x squared plus one point zero zero three three zero three power four x squared and your limits are minus six three five seven and positive six three five seven and let's multiply by by two pi and the value of a is 
510064266.3 and let's go ahead and turn this into scientific notation for as specified by the question a should be from 1 to 10 and q should be in um, positive integers 5.1 into 10 power 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 10 power 8 kilometers squared so this is your final answer and that is the end of this paper guys i hope this tutorial was helpful or this walkthrough was helpful and um hopefully your exams go well if you guys are writing m23 or any batch for that matter but for the m23s out there that are watching this video very good luck to you guys hopefully your papers are easy and hopefully you guys do amazing um, if you'd like any more help, feel free to leave it down in the comments. If you have suggestions for the next paper in physics, chemistry, or even math, I would be happy to take those suggestions and go ahead and do those.